All right, we're picking back up in the kitchen. This is now part three of the kitchen remodeling, resurfacing, facelift video things. Uh, when last we left off, uh, I had run into an issue where I hadn't properly glued down the insert pieces uh, of the laminate. So I set them up to glue and put some weights on them. And now we're going to do the reveal and see if it actually worked. Wish me luck. So I did find one other place that had an issue and that was on this side. Uh, so... Well, this is looking good. It seems to have glued down. So now let's try the big one. I'm going to move these off to the side. <clears throat> Try to break free our piece here. Yeah. Hey, that looks like it actually glued down. All right. Um, something I'm noticing is that this glue is really flexible. So I'm going to get something to take it out of the center part so that I can put the epoxy in and we'll go from there. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. The thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead with the epoxy try and force some epoxy under here and then put some weights back on top of it uh, because I have to let the epoxy harden anyway so let's see if that gives it a shot I don't really want to do another delay on the gluing all right what I'm using is this JB weld plastic bonder um, I figure that this is probably a pretty good thing to use on laminate, trying to glue laminate to laminate and laminate to wood, and to just act as a filler. Um, it's got a 15 minute work time, and apparently it's sandable within 30 minutes. Again, I'm going to give it more time to work with, but Oh, this stuff is really runny compared to most epoxies. Wow. I am going to start with this lifted piece. I'm just going to lift it up a little bit and add some epoxy in there. The epoxy is in, I'm going to let it cure and harden. I'll come back in a couple of hours and see what it looks like. And if all is well, we'll get to sanding. Hi, it's Rob. <coughs> and I have help today. Hello, Piper. Hello. Uh, I am underneath the sink because it is time to remove the sink from the countertop. And uh, 
Turns out that it's a little more complicated than I had anticipated, so uh, I guess we're going to uh, do this and see how it goes. Because I have plenty of help. The dogs have been swimming down in the river and they're very wet and very happy. Mm. I know, little girl. Mm. Alright, let's get going. Alright, one of the more annoying things that I've discovered is these clips that hold the sink down have this really annoying slot driver set up, not even really a screw head. And I don't know about you, but I hate flatheads because they have such a difficult time. I have such a difficult time keeping them on there. Uh, the second difficulty is, of course, the garbage disposal, which I've never removed a garbage disposal before, but uh, I'm assuming that it's going to be relatively easy. <laughs> so I just loosened this drain nut on this side, and next thing I want to do is take off the drain hose for the dishwasher, and then we'll spin this and hopefully that will come out. So the disposal itself is held in by this flange nut and this should turn by itself if you need a little bit of help. Um, there is a garbage disposal flange wrench that you can buy. Otherwise, I do have these uh, uh, Allen wrenches that I'm going to probably have to use, but we'll see. Next thing is we want to uh, make sure that the water is shut off. And then we can remove these faucet hoses. Last thing is to just loosen this up. Well, it's not the last thing, but as far as the plumbing goes. So this is now disconnected from the plumbing. Now I've got to deal with those crazy um, sink hold down things. So I'm going to try and remove them with this little, uh, come on, focus, this little uh, flathead bit but in order to try and keep them on I am going to try and be clever and use a piece of tubing this is some old crap tubing that is you know it's long past its sell-by date so before anybody niggles me on my uh, cutting skills screw you eh. there we go so now the idea is drop this over here and the inside of this should act as a guide for those screws. Let's see if it works. I 
it seems to have worked rather well. Well, unfortunately, one of those hold down clips is broken up here, so I couldn't get it screwed out. I got all the rest of them unscrewed and turned so that the sink should lift out, and I'm hoping that I can lift it out enough to get this one to clear without uh, breaking anything too much. So, let's give it a shot. Well, this is one of these hold down clips. You can see better the slot for driving it here and this post that locks into a track on the bottom of the sink. I don't like these. And there is the culprit that is broken off. See that edge right there. Uh, this one I'm not going to be reusing. And you see just how crusty this is. This wasn't put down with silicone, this was put down with plumber's putty. Uh, okay. Uh, something else I noticed earlier is that this is bowed out from the wall. I wanted to check and see if this was that the wall was crooked or this is crooked, but when I look at it further, it's just not attached. So. I'm going to have to attach that a little stronger to make it more solid. All right, I think I'm on a stud here and I've got these deck screws. I pre-drilled these and countersunk them, so hopefully... Ah, no, no stud. Pretty much prepared. Maybe they should kind of sweep off the counter a little bit, but uh, what I'm doing is I'm going to use this uh, orbital sander, random orbital sander, with some 60 grit sandpaper to start. Um, I hope that this is going to rough it up enough for the, the uh, concrete to stick. If not, this and some 12 grit. And I don't know if you can see, but uh, there's quite a bit of scarring and enough scratches in here to get a decent foothold for the uh, cement coat. I'm probably going to go over this again with a sanding block and some uh, some really coarse grit sandpaper. I have to do these uh, back sides. So I've got a you know sanding block here that I need to get the paper for and uh, I need to take care of those. need to find a way to screw that in. I uh, got the counters over here and the counters over there done. So uh, I think tomorrow I'm going to pick up with just regular deep sanding, hand sanding. The surface prep is really the thing that is going to take a lot of time here. I can see that. Uh, but I want to make sure that the surface is prepped right because I don't really want the concrete lifting up. This is a look at the rig that I came up with for trying to press this back into place. I ran a whole bunch of 
construction adhesive down in that crack and then I'm using one of these uh, clamps and I just reversed the end to push this now so I'm pushing against this part of the counter you can see it's a little bowed out which isn't great but uh, it's pushing a lot of pressure onto this piece and hopefully that is going to cure with enough strength to keep it held against the wall uh, it's still not perfect there's you know a little bit of separation over there and a little bit over here but uh, for now I think this is going to do okay I will find out if the glue holds um, if not I do have some epoxy and if it gets down to it I can get some wall anchors and you know pull it back in with the wall anchors but I'm hoping to not do that I mean I've already drilled a couple holes in it that I can fill but I would really rather not if I can help it surface prep uh, the best tool that I've found so far for doing the surface prep is uh, a DA polisher this is a dual action polisher that I got from Harbor Freight and uh, it's got quite a bit of quite a bit of oscillation you can see how uh, how much offset it is you know from one side to the other so it swirls it swirls in little circles around a big circle and that has done really good in getting the surface nice and dull everywhere now the combination of that 12 grit on the big grinder and um, you know taking out some of these big swaths and this getting the surface dulled down to the point where the concrete can grab I think that's going to work well you want to take your time with the surface preparation I've been sanding these counters for probably five hours now trying to get the surface to a point where I feel like it's ready to have that first coat of the feather finish put on and I'm gonna go look at it one more time with kind of a fine tooth comb and look at the light reflecting and see if I can't touch up a few extra spots. I'm also gone and hit the edge with the sander. Uh, this is just the uh, the palms and the orbital sander uh, just to rough up the wood edge here because I'm going to be putting the concrete on this wood edge as well. As for the back splash, uh, I haven't got all of this yet. I need to do some finish sanding on that and especially the piece that's back here I haven't been able to get to that but I have hit over here and some of this this is a lot more difficult to get to uh, I did use the orbital sander on that and then I used a sanding block with some uh, 40 grit sandpaper to try and take down some of that but I think I'm going to have to hit that harder I'm trying to get a good look at the reflection so that you can see the surface and how it's roughed up you can see how a lot of it is shiny but there's enough scratches in there that it looks a little bit dull ideally I'd want it to be almost entirely dull but I don't think that's going to happen uh, the laminate top on this is surprisingly tough 